There's a quote I heard once watching an amazing movie. The stuff you own ends up owning you. If you know who, uh, what that movie that is from, it's from the book as well. Drop me a comment and tell me if you know where that's from. Six years ago, I sold or gave away almost everything that I own. And today we're gonna talk about why and we're gonna talk about how because those are the two biggest questions that I get when I tell people that I have basically not had a quote unquote real home for since 2018. Now, this year in 2024 is, I do, I would say I have a home and it is basically me living in Colombia. Right now I'm in the US visiting my family. I have a new baby niece. So I came to visit, which has been nice. So the first thing I wanna talk about, so is the why. Why did I decide to sell everything that I owned? Because there are a lot of ways that you can go about deciding to travel the world. So my why is that I had this deep, like just, I just wanted to see if I could fulfill this deep desire that I had inside of me to take on a new challenge. I was at work and it was a point where I wasn't in love with my career and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I was thinking if I wanted to pursue further education in nursing or if I want to completely change my career. And I thought, why not just take a career break? Why not shed myself from everything that I have, I own, and essentially start over, hit the reset button. And it's not that I hit the reset button, but it was, and it's not that I wanted to necessarily start over because I mean, obviously you can't run from your problems, which a lot of people think that full-time travelers like us, that's what we're doing. And to an extent we are running, not always from our problems, but sometimes if you remove yourself from the situation that you're in, your problems will be more clear to acknowledge what they are and then without a bunch of little people or things or jobs to get in the way, you will be able to visualize and see that problem more clearly and sometimes find a solution. So that is a huge thing that happened along my travels that I have been working on. So before you jump and sell all your things, I mean, it's great if you absolutely 100% know that you want to long-term travel full-time for an unknown and extended amount of time, which I did. I say I thought I would take a year break because I thought that I would take a year break, but I was planning just in case I decided not to. Before I decided to travel full-time with a one-way ticket, I did test runs. I wasn't someone who just decided one day to wake up and that I'm gonna sell all my stuff and travel the world and who knows what's gonna happen. I had a very, I'm not a very planned person, but I have always have a plan and a goal of what I imagine my life to look like in the future. And I knew that it would either be moving abroad or it would be coming back and then I would have to restart. I've restarted so many times in my life, so to me that was not scary. It was just time. I just knew it was just time. So the why was I wanted to change. I wanted to reset. I wanted to see what else was out there and decide what I wanted to do with my career. If I wanted to go in direction A, B, C, or D, and I ended up going in a completely, I ended up going in the direction that I initially wanted to, which was quit and start a whole new career, which is what I'm doing with my online stuff but I always wanted to be in some form of content creation, writing, I always wanted to write, so that's what I'm doing now. And I always wanted to figure out how to do something because that just interests me. It makes me think about questions because I always have a lot of questions. So I can answer those questions to myself or to find an answer and help somebody out who wants to know how to sell their things to travel the world. So <laughs> back on track, right? I'm very good at getting off track. So the why was I had a deep internal desire and I knew that, I just knew that I was not gonna be coming back the same person with all the same things and I didn't want the stuff that I own to own me really because if I was to travel and I had all my stuff 
stored somewhere in a storage container, I would have felt like I had an attachment to something and I'm really working on getting rid of attachments to everything so that the result doesn't affect me because I can't control what happens. So I don't want to be attached to the end, the outcome or something. And I know a lot of people don't agree with, might not agree with that, but I think, and I do have attachments, obviously I'm human, but I don't want to be attached to things. Like if one of my boxes gets wet, what if my important documents are in there? I don't want to worry about it. So there are a few options. Let's get into the logistics. If you, first of all, before you decide to travel the world, I highly recommend you taking a long extended trip to make sure that it's something that you even want. Before I started traveling, I took off about eight weeks from my job and took a extended vacation. I went to Bali for a couple weeks and then I came back, went back to work, and then I took another six weeks to travel through France. I know, I just went to France, but I just wanted to see what it was all about. I started volunteering. I realized at that point, the volunteer gig I had, I actually hated it and left early. And then I just kind of traveled. I did some group tours. I did, I just kind of went all over. And when I came back home, I realized, oh, this is something I do want to pursue. At that point, I was in a lot of relationship and I wasn't quite ready to take the leap, but I had it in the back of my mind that in the future, I do want to do this. And I started thinking about what can I do to figure a way out to earn money online because this is when people are starting to make money. And I went to become a holistic health coach and I was looking, I was always looking for a way to better my skills that could serve or to monetize or to help somebody in a way that was not me going into the hospital and having to be physically present for a job. And at that point, it was before COVID, it was before remote work. And I was like, I just thought I have to create my own job. I had no idea. I had no idea. And this is why it took me so long to actually take the leap into getting to travel. So slowly by slowly, I started, I stopped buying things. I started paying off my bills. I started picking up extra shifts. I got a new job that paid me higher because I knew I had a one end goal was to save money. So at this point, I didn't actually, I got a higher paying job, which I ended up liking. So my, my, my goal of traveling long-term kind of got pushed back. And this is what happens is I didn't like my one job. So I went part-time then I got a full-time job that I actually liked. I made more money and then the vicious cycle started again. So I think it took me about five, four to five years before I even started saving. I wasn't saving when I was making more money. I was not saving anything. I was still renting an apartment, really expensive. I had did pay off my car. I was still buying things. So I was conscious what I was doing, but I wasn't actually phys like taking action on any of the, what I wanted my end goal to be. I wasn't taking any action. I just had it there. And I was like, oh, thinking oh, I'll probably never do it. I'll probably never do it. And then one day I my lease was up in my apartment or my house. He was raising the rent and I was like, oh, I'm just not gonna. I ended up moving in with a friend, staying with her on her couch. <laughs> and we split her rent because she was going somewhere in a different direction. And I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I wanna travel, but I was too scared. So that was a point where I thought, you know what? Let me just start selling my stuff because I'm gonna move out anyways. So I ended up so how? So let's talk about the how to actually do it in between my story time is I, okay, so now this was in 2018. So Facebook Marketplace, I didn't have any luck on Facebook Marketplace, but now I know for Facebook Marketplace is a great place to start selling things. Craigslist, I listed stuff on Craigslist and I used an app called OfferUp, which still exists, but at that point, OfferUp, Craigslist, and Facebook Marketplace were the only things to start selling. So I used all three. I mostly sold everything on OfferUp, and I, I say everything, that's a very loose term. I sold a good chunk of things on OfferUp. Then I, then I started telling people what I was doing and what I had for sale, so I sold a lot of stuff. Uh, yet again, I say a lot, but it was like a handful of things by word of mouth or people I knew. I gave things away. And then I gave a lot to the thrift market that I used to live near. And then one day, so this is how I got rid of the majority of my stuff. 
I had about a week left in my lease and I still had a bunch of stuff in my house and I was putting stuff out on the, the curb because if you put stuff out on the curb, people will come and take it. I was living in Pasadena and I had put out like some cooler or something and I looked out my window and I was in the middle of going through stuff and I see this dude looking at something. So I walked out to him and I said, oh, what are you looking for? Are you looking for something specific? Can I help you with anything? Because it was something I had put out there. And he just looks at me and he's like, no, not really. I'm just, you know, looking at the condition, if I want it or not. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, well, are you looking for it for yourself? Or are you looking for it? I don't know, because people go around collect junk and then they resell it. And he told me that he worked for like a nursing home or like a assisted living facility that was literally down the road. He said, no, every day I go around with my, I go around and if I find something I like, I come back with the truck later and I pick it up. So I basically told him that I was moving, I wanted to travel and I was getting rid of everything in my house. So I invited him into the house and I said, everything in here you can have if you want, if it'll help these people who, cause he worked for people who couldn't afford to buy new furniture and they didn't have any new stuff. And it was just a, I don't know, like a assisted living nursing home kind of setup. And I said, well, I'm a nurse and I understand when people go to these places, they don't have a lot of money, they, it, it's really expensive. I said, you can have everything in here. So basically <laughs> he said, are you kidding? And I said, no, absolutely not. And I had tried to sell some of the stuff online and people were offering me low ball offers and I didn't take it. And I don't know why, I just was like, I don't know. I just, it was just such a hassle for someone to come pick up one thing and I had to wait all day. and. So he came back with a truck and literally loaded every single thing that I did not want or did not sell yet into the back of his truck and took everything, my couch, rug, bed, sofa, like a chair, table. No, he didn't take my table. I kept, I kept a couple of things. I kept my table. So my sister wanted a couple of things. She wanted my table. She wanted the lamp and I gave her some of my like pots and pans. I had some nice pots and pans. So I did give those to my sister. Yeah, so he basically took everything and I was in my house and I was like, I have absolutely nothing and I was ready to move. And that was it. That was, the rest of the stuff, I do still have two boxes of things. I have like some documents because you know you just have to take, keep a few documents. So I have a couple of, you know, photo albums, a couple of books, um, just like, I don't know, college degree. I have about, here my sisters, I have about two suitcases of clothes because um, I have warm clothes, cold clothes, so if I need to switch stuff up, like my sister gave me a bunch of stuff. <laughs> Everything I have on my sister gave me because <laughs> I hate to shop. I still don't like to shop because I still don't like to be attached to my things. And But yeah, I do know when I'm living and I have a home, I need certain things to survive to live. So I do understand that I do need things now that I'm settled and I'm not living out of a backpack. But yeah, so that is the how is word of mouth, offer up apps. Now they have like, oh my God, I have about 20 apps I was gonna talk to you guys about and tell you Facebook Marketplace, Poshmark, offer up Craigslist. Oh, I forgot, oh my God, I had a bunch of jewelry. <laughs> I was married before and his family gave me a bunch of stuff and I basically sold it all <laughs> at a pawn shop because I had like my wedding dress, I donated that. I mean, talk about, I got rid of everything and like, yeah. So anyways, okay, so pawn shops. So I did sell a lot of stuff to pawn shops. A lot, again, a handful. I made car, uh, yard sale, eBay, Swappa, Bonanza, Ruby Lane, Mercari, Nextdoor, Gazelle, Vestari Collection, Varage Sale, Thread Up, Tayoboa, Game Flip. So those are a few apps that you could actually use to sell stuff nowadays. They were not there when I did it. Um, so, yeah, so my, but I, okay, so I also had a car. <laughs> my car, I had a Honda Element 2009 old car, had over 100,000 miles on it, and that car was 100% paid off. And I actually sold the car to a friend of a friend. So she basically, I left the car at my sister's house and when the girl could come pick it up, she picked it up and they, she just transferred me the money via PayPal. So yeah, I even sold my car. So I was at the point of knowing that I was not coming back. 
and even if I do like I come back to the US twice a year at least twice a year I'm coming back yeah I'll be twice a year this year too twice a year every year I come back twice a year and I have not noticed that I miss these things or want these things and the things that I wanted to keep I kept and I actually do use them which is good because like just sometimes you're in your house and you're like I have all this stuff and I don't use half of it so now all the stuff I have I actually use which makes me feel good because something that I bought is getting the use out of it and sometimes I have to replace things like I had to buy some new GoPro batteries I need to buy a new tripod because it melted and it's real so a few things I need to replace but replacing when you're a traveler and long term and you've gotten rid of all your stuff when you buy something you get rid of something because your backpack doesn't have the room for it so I have gotten into this if I replace something I need to get rid of something and now I'm gonna bring a few back few more things back to Colombia but that's just how I've been for so long like this tripod oh my god it is so crazy it like I have so many things that are broken right now and I'm slowly when I'm here in the US I go on Amazon I replace them like I had to buy new headphones I'll get rid of the old ones just like stuff like that stuff that literally I'm not buying it because I just want it I'm buying it because I actually need it and will use it so getting rid of all my things and living on a backpack has taught me the value of something so I'm not just endlessly shopping and putting things in my car and buying them and I don't use them and don't need them and what I used to, and I used to do that I used to be one of those people who would just go shopping and then I would got rid of I got rid of so many clothes that had tags on them that I never wore and I, I just did it to fulfill like this need inside of me that I'm like why I don't understand why I bought this but it was fulfilling some sort of desire to have and now I have a desire to not have which is completely flipped which is weird yeah so okay so I want to now talk about if you have a house so I was renting so for me my lease was up I just left no big deal however if you have a house that is like a huge asset luckily nowadays if you want to get rid of all your stuff you actually don't have to sell your house and travel the world because that is a great asset especially right now I mean yeah you could sell it because the market's doing great but if I had a house I probably would not have sold it I would have rented it out so you can there's like lots of rental agencies now that you can just pay them and they do all the work for you so you have like an asset to sell when you get older or come back and live it eventually if you want to because you never know but yeah if you sell your house too hey I mean that much money traveling or overseas or moving is a whole lot of money especially somewhere outside of the US I yeah so I don't have that experience so but I would probably rent it out or yeah hire an agency to do that that's a completely different ball game that I was not in and I don't have really any advice but I have a friend she was renting a place she's German she was renting a place in Germany and she was subletting for she was subletting for like five years and finally but she had to do all the work so she's had to get tenants in and if she didn't have a tenant she had to pay the rent so for her she's now this year going back and getting rid of it but it's a lease it's a rental so she doesn't need to it's no no reason to keep it she doesn't get anything out of it except for in case she goes back to Germany which she's now realized she isn't but you can hold on to things too and then over time you're gonna make a decision whether or not you want to hold on to that any longer or if it's time to let it go and sometimes you need that sometimes maybe you don't want to sell your car and you have somewhere to store it if you have somewhere to store it and someone's willing to let you put your stuff in their garage or their basement and you want to do a trial run do a trial run you don't have to sell everything at the same time and I think it's just like I think of this as I get a lot of comments and people asking me about like moving abroad and I think you should always visit and live in the country that you want to live in before you decide to 100% move there and get a visa because if you decide you're moving there and getting a visa and you go there and then you don't like it and then you know that's kind of I think you should need to go live there because it's like the first time I went to Columbia I knew I loved it but I didn't stay I wasn't planning on moving I was just traveling I didn't know where I wanted to live I thought I was gonna end up somewhere over in Europe because I loved Italy I loved Spain I love being in Europe and that just wasn't what happened I actually haven't been to Europe on any of these travels 
because I went there before when I had a real job because Europe's more expensive and I don't, I don't make that much money. So I don't want to go live somewhere that's going to be so impossible for me to live. But that's not why I didn't go to Europe though. I just haven't had a desire to go. I want to go to Eastern Europe, but right now I'm not going to lie. I have no desire to travel besides around Colombia. So because I like being there and I think when you find somewhere that you like, then you can make the decision, am I going to move there or am I just going to go visit a lot? So like I decided to move there. So, but I don't have any stuff to bring. I was watching this. Oh my God. I was watching, I was scrolling through YouTube and I was watching a video about this couple that moved to Ecuador. There's a lot of couples that moved to Ecuador. So I know you're like, which one? I don't remember. But they talked about how they brought all their stuff from the U.S. to Ecuador and how expensive it was. Yeah, you can buy everything you need in another country. And I know you're probably thinking, well, and yes, do they have the same quality or the same brands? Probably not. But can you find something similar to that same standard that you want? Probably for half the price? Yes. So do I recommend bringing your stuff overseas? No. Do I recommend selling it if you know that you're going to make a whole completely life change? Yeah, sell it and you can probably buy the same thing for the amount you sold it for. Or write it off on your taxes, right? So, not tax advice. I know nothing about taxes. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, yeah, so I think, yeah, you need to take a test trip to see if this is something that you're interested in doing like I did. Like I still had my house and had all my things when I took six weeks off and went to travel. And it wasn't that my job was so flexible they allowed me. Don't like think that I had this great job. No, I threatened to quit. Well, I did quit. I put in my two weeks because I wanted to take a long extended vacation to see if I wanted to do this. And if they weren't gonna allow me, I was like, well, this is a dream that I have. So I was like, if this is a dream I want to have, I have to act on it. And if they don't want me to work there anymore, I was already had a second job. So I'm like, well, I have two jobs. So yeah, so I, they ended up hiring, keeping me and let me take the time off. So, uh, but I pushed the boundaries. I threatened to quit. I mean, I did quit technically. I had two weeks, but then I went back and anyways, long story. That's a different, different, different story time. So, okay. So should we talk about how I saved money? <laughs> I sold my things. How much did I make from selling all my things? I sold I sold my car for about $4,500. And then I, how much I made, I might've made $2,500. So I probably made about $6,500, including my car, selling all of my stuff. That's not really that much. I mean, yeah, it's enough for me to live on for an entire year abroad because I'm very frugal now. I went from like spending so much money to being very frugal. I also, paid off before I left. I still have school loans. So just FYI, I still have school loans. And so I still pay them. Right now they're in deferment because when you don't make enough money, the plan I'm on defers. So I don't make that much money because I don't need to. So my school loans are in deferment, but I've been paying for like 18 years or something stupid. Anyways, well, I don't know. It's a whatever. I still pay. I pay the minimum. I pay what I'm supposed to pay. They're in deferment. Every other year they do something. Um, so then I had 20 grand in credit card debt I had to pay off. So I worked, I had about four jobs that I was working to save money. I saved enough money to travel within six months and pay off my credit card debt within six months. Cause I wasn't planning and, and it wasn't until I sold my stuff that it got real. And I thought, wow, I've been working so hard for all this stuff that really means nothing to me. So that was the whole click moment of, wow, my stuff had totally owned my life and taken over my life. So once I stopped buying stuff and lived with my friend and saved money and paid off all my debt and went to work and saved like 80% of what I was making and I had no, no bills except for the basics like school loans, gas, food, I health insurance was through my hospital. I realized that it only took me like six months to save up. So, and I saved up a good chunk of change so that I wouldn't have to worry if I didn't get a job, which I ended up getting a remote job. So my remote job, and now I'm doing online stuff. So like, it's kind of been balancing out. It's been balancing out. I spend what I make. 
I mean, uh, what am I spending this month? Now I spend like $500 a month. I can make around $500 a month. Or it depends. Some months are better than others. You've, I've done videos on like my income. This month, this past few months, no, it's been really bad. So, so yeah. So, um, but yeah. So I just like put my head down and I just worked to my goal, sold my stuff, and then I left. And do I have any regrets? Absolutely not. <laughs> because if I have to start over, I mean, I did start over, but I started over in a different country. If I was going to come back to the U.S. and start over, then I have to start over again. I mean, starting over is not the worst thing because you still have all that knowledge and all that experience that I have of being a nurse, traveling, learning another language, learning how to interact with people, learning how to edit videos, learning how to write, learning how to build a website, learning all these skills. You think like, I would never learn this at a job that I was, was like basically a pill pusher. Like, so yeah, I learned how to negotiate, how to haggle, how to like do these random skills. So I know a lot of people are like, oh, but you're a nurse, you should come back, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, if I want to come back and get a job, I can come back and get a job. That's not like, but that's not my goal. That's not my end goal. So yeah, did I cover everything? <laughs> If you follow me, you know I'm really good, really off track. I'm not really good at organization. My brain doesn't function that way. I have notes, but I don't know if I want to cover them. When I, during the editing process, I will see. So yeah, decide if you want to, why you want to do it, and how you want to do it. And if you want to sell your stuff, selling your stuff is the easy part. I'm not going to lie. That is the easiest part. Selling your stuff, realizing you have too much, starting to save your money, that is the easy part. The hard part is actually buying the ticket and doing it. That's the hard part. So drop me a comment. Don't forget, drop me a comment if you know who that, where that video is, <laughs> where that quote is from. The book is amazing as well as the movie, but the book is way better. As everything, books are always better, right? So yeah, if you have questions, drop me a comment and I will answer it. Thank you so much. I hope you all have a great day afternoon. Bye.